and thank you for giving me this opportunity not only to visit Great Britain, but also to be here and meet with this man. <laughs> you, of course. <laughs> My motivation for this paper derived from two different projects. One, sometimes 2011, I was a student at Leiden. I was a student at Leiden and towards the dead end of my doctoral program, I was commissioned by the ACP to examine a particular project EU commissioned in Nigeria on internal migration. The two flagship institutions or agencies in Nigeria that worked on this project were the Bureau for Statistics and the National Population Commission. They turned in their report, and the report was that internal migration was a negative contributor to human development. So I was asked to validate or invalidate this report, and I went on the third. What I got was complete opposite of what these two agencies submitted. And part of the problem, because I had access to their raw data, was that they bank on statistics from the most recent of this was 1978. 1978. In this, their report, not only was internal migration derided, International migration was praised using data from World Bank. It was praised as the most contributing factor. In fact, it was described as a great contributor to the GDP. I find these two conclusions, both on the first on internal migration trouble and the one on international migration trouble. But I was commissioned only to work on internal migration and I submitted my report defended it at Abuja, and to God be the glory, it was published. So this opportunity today is to look at international component of that. Am I doing it right? No. <laughs> So my motive for this paper is simple, to examine how non-migration policies in both countries of origin and countries of destination influence, one, migration decisions, how it stimulates different layers of migration, and how it affects aspirations of migrants in country of destination. And I'm picking two different policies. One, structural adjustment program, which we do honor of. And the second one, orchestrated by President Richard Obasanjo between 1999 and 2007. And it's on the basis of this last one that that report that I mentioned earlier on praised international migration, saying that it was a net contributor to the GDP going largely because a large number of people who migrated out of the country during this structural adjustment program years finally came back home. How true this is, is what I want to find out. As far as structural adjustment program is concerned, it entails a whole number of things. One, the regulation of non oil sector, because it was believed that part of the problem why Nigeria was so poor then was that we have this over-concentration on crude oil. So the received knowledge from IMF and World Bank is that decentralize, remove all attention from oil, develop non-oil sector, and you balance the economy. It was simple, straightforward, and part of the component is not just this, but privatization of public enterprises, devaluation of national currencies, and things like that. 
without any prejudice to structural adjustment program, it achieves its goal in the first few years. But on the long term, it stimulated international migration. On the short term, it stimulated national migration, migration movement of non-skilled or semi-skilled people from within the country. And this was in kind of a three or four dimensional shape. We have urban to rural, rural to urban, and all that within the nation. But as far as the international migration component was concerned, it led to mass influx of people who were trained in Nigeria, who enjoyed all the good stuff that would transform the nation. It led to their migration to the United States, Europe, UK as a very good example, and the Gulf states. Thereby, leaving Nigeria, its health system, its educational system, in the, horrible, the most horrible of shapes. So why structural adjustment program induce national and international migration uh, needs is a totally different policy. It was not foisted on Nigeria. It was homegrown, developed by expert, especially international migrants. The aim of need was to kind of bridge government and private sector in wealth creation. It also entailed some component from structural adjustment program. But this time around, it brought about individuals contributing to policy formulation and policy implementation. But unlike structural adjustment program, it became an engine of growth in the sense that transportation sector, different sectors of the economy became privatized became privatized. Then in Nigeria, before then in Nigeria, telephony was a big, a big difficulty. It's only the rich, the big people that could afford it. But following this implementation of needs, you have cellular phones almost everywhere. That every Tom Dick and Harry on the street of Nigeria could say, hello, where are you? And send text messages. That became a new rhetoric, a new narrative. And it was on this basis that needs was praised to high heavens. Part of the praises include that from 2003, from 2003, a large number of Nigerians, highly skilled Nigerians who have fled to Europe, to USA, to the Gulf states, began to come home. A sequentially, one of the architects noted that needs led to reforms in the telecommunication sector and in all different sectors of the economy. Why this is understandable, it's a given, it's undebatable. The issue goes beyond that. As far as this paper is concerned, I'm kind of challenging this single story perspective to the contribution of needs, especially to the return migration of Nigerians in different parts of the world. I challenge this because I considered it a single story that gives incomplete picture of the situation. But beyond this single story, the, what I'm kind of interested in is to look at how structural adjustment program and needs contributed to this movement, and above all, the experiences of this migrants in their different countries. And I took the example of the United States with one simple example. There are thousands of other examples of things that happened right in the United States that made it compulsory for Nigerians to come home. And my argument is that needs, above all things, created some kind of a friendly environment upon which whatever needs achieve in bringing these highly skilled migrant home, it was those exogenous factors outside of Nigeria that contributed, that brought these people home, no needs. That's the basis of my argument. And what I'm looking at here in explaining this is categories and classification of visas and how it affected aspirations of migrants in their different parts of 
the world. In the case of the United States, these are the categories of visas that U.S. issued to everybody, irrespective of where you come from. And a large number of skilled migrants from Nigeria fall between the category of H-1B visa, J visa, F-1 visa, which, of course, are student visas. H-1B visas are classified as highly skilled, highly skilled. Visa, there are other classifications of visas, but these were the main ones that are open to these Nigerians. Also, H-1B visa, H-4 visa, B-1, B-2, B-1 visa, H-4 visa, F visas. These are the different classifications. Uh, these different classifications have implications for what becomes of you in the United States. Take the case of H-1B, which, was, which is the most common among highly skilled professionals. It's a work visa. It allows you to work, to have a life. But your dependent, who carries H-4, cannot work. So in a situation whereby a highly skilled migrant leaves Nigeria with three or four members of his family. He is the only one who can work. So, largely, they found themselves in an environment whereby they are empowered, but their dependents were not empowered. They cannot tap into anything within the states. So, their situation is not in any way better. Their situation is just not in any way better. And as a component of another research, what we found was that a large proportion of these people decided to go home, not because of needs, but because of the fact that they could don't achieve their aspirations in the United States. So, H-1B visa order, what's my time? Okay. H-1B visa order, the most popular visas among skilled migrants, and perhaps one of the major reasons why we have a large number of people falling into a crack the skilling. You then have a situation whereby dependents find themselves taking low skilled jobs, majority of whom now develop all kinds of illnesses tied to exclusively to their inability to satisfy their aspirations. So, how many of such skilled, high, highly skilled migrants are among the people that return to Nigeria that needs a Nigerian government or the different bureau, the different researches, are now claiming that they return to Nigeria based on the amicable environment created by needs. How many of such are victims of, how many of such returned migrants are victims of the scaling? One notable factor driving the scaling is simple. No lack of respect for offshore certificates and diplomas. The certificate that I carry is the same certificate that my wife carries, but because I'm H1B, she is H4, she cannot work. I am the only one who can work. In a family of five, my salary cannot even take anybody home. So at the end of the day, I return home from my office only to meet five sets of people who are disgruntled, who ask themselves almost every day, why do you bring me here? Why do you bring me here? So my conclusion, because of time, I thought I'm going to stay with this time. Like structural adjustment program and needs, migration and non-migration policies, both in countries of origin and destination, play fundamental roles in migration decision. It shapes patterns of my return migration. A large number of people that return who are highly skilled, who are playing different roles in government, yes, they are, have a life in the United States, but they are, what about their dependents? As Africans, I have no life, so far my children do not have life. I have no life, so far my wife, in so far as my wife has no life. So the question of whether needs brought these people home should be understood within a particular context. Needs provided the environment, but it's not the main driver. Thank you very much.